The first Pokemon game came out 20 years ago this year. Doesn't that make you feel old? It was the first game, at least for my generation, that was a real obsession. And that obsession, at least for seven-year-old me, led me to my first real choice in life. What starting Pokemon do I choose? Well, I think statistics can help answer that question. Just promise not to hate me, all right? If you loved Pokemon like I did, there is no way you don't remember this intro. Ah yes, let the nostalgia flow through you. Right after starting Pokemon Red or Blue for the first time, and giving your rival a hilarious name to read over and over again like Buttsack, you are tasked with a pretty serious choice. Either you can choose Charmander, Bulbasaur, or Squirtle, and that choice does make a difference more than just personal preference. So how can we take these differences and make an informed decision between them? Data, kind of. First, some parameters. Let's look at the starting and evolved statistics for each of the starting Pokemon. And although I know that you can catch Pokemon later on in the game to help out just about any team that you decide to build, let's see how the starting Pokemon fare against all of the Pokemon of all the gym leaders, including the Elite Four. Yeah, that's exactly where we're going with this. I want to see a chart of this. Don't worry, I did just that. It turns out that the starting stats aren't much help. Although each Pokemon has strengths and weaknesses, relatively speaking, in terms of total statistics and how those statistics increase as they evolve, all three starting Pokemon are pretty much dead even. So what about, just a second, let me cut that out of the way. So what about your main opponents, the gym leaders? If the starting Pokemon had clear advantages and disadvantages against them, then we might be getting somewhere. All right, prepare yourselves. A few years ago, I made charts elucidating just these points, the attack and defense matchups between your starting Pokemon and the Pokemon of all the Elite Four and all the gym leaders. Are you ready? It's really nerdy. I warned you. Okay, here it is. Ooh, oh, look at it. Isn't it beautiful? Ooh. Using that chart, Charmander is super effective in 15 matchups. Squirtle is super effective in 42 matchups. And Bulbasaur has the upper vine <laughs> in 36 battles. Ready for the next chart? Here it is. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, so nerdy. Here is how your Pokemon defend against the types of all the gym leaders and the Elite Four. Looking at defense, Charmander has a disadvantage in 38 battles, Squirtle has a disadvantage in only 24 battles, and Bulbasaur gets a vine whipping, get it, in 41 battles. Looking at those matchups, it's pretty clear. Squirtle has the most advantages and the least amount of disadvantages. He's who you should choose. Oh, come on, Zubat, I took like two steps. There are other reasons to choose Squirtle as well. He makes the first two gyms at a time in the game when you can't catch a lot of other Pokemon to deal with the types that the gym leaders are dealing with relatively easy. Bulbasaur does the same thing, but he doesn't evolve type-specific moves as quickly, and then I'd refer you to the two previous charts as well. Given those advantages and the fact that Squirtle can learn powerful TMs like Dig and Mega Punch, as well as a powerful HM Surf, Squirtle is the chosen Pokemon of speedrunners. Oh, sorry. I bubble beamed. Any way you cut it, get it? Squirtle seems to be the best choice. But I know that playing Pokemon is more than just about stats. Sure, some battles will be hard in the early going with Charmander, but when he evolves into Charizard, he looks dope as all dopeness in the kingdom of dope. So this is just one way to look at that agonizing choice. But it's also the right one. Because science. Fly, Pidgeotto! so much for watching. Hey, Yolo Chew. What's up? You want to know the difference between evolution and metamorphosis? Sure. All right, I'll tell you. So what Pokemon are going through when they evolve is more of a metamorphosis, like something a, an amphibian or an insect would do. And you're probably familiar with, say, caterpillars metamorphosing. Uh, they're actually really amazing because when they spin, you know, the cocoon, the chrysalis for themselves, 
they actually release enzymes from their body to, di to dissolve every single <laughs> bodily organ, save for a few cells that are programmed to reform into the organs of a beautiful butterfly or moth. And when it's in this soup-like state, it's, it, it, it has been proven that they can retain some memories from when they were a caterpillar, some behaviors from when they were a caterpillar to when they were a butterfly. So it, it's like a sentient bug soup. And then it emerges a beautiful YOLO uh, caterpillar. But that's metamorphosis and not evolution. That would take like millions of years. Oh, I can't grind for that long. Do you know how many missing nose you'd have to find for that? 